Do your will. I even said, Lord, if it means losing her, I, I accept that. You know? And uh, God spared her life. She's back there. Okay? Yep. I'll tell you, it's tough. But you know what? See, so sometimes there is some bad times with your children, you know? Dedicating your child this morning, parents, does not, it doesn't mean that uh, they're completely safe. Okay? Sometimes things do go bad. But what's nice, you have God right there. And God gave me peace that night that everything was going to be okay. You know, I believe it all in my heart. Why? Because of me? No. Because I was willing to surrender it. You know, dads, you know, we're fixing, we like to fix things. There was not a blessed thing I could do. Nothing. Except give it to God. So, why? Because it's a gift. She was God's gift. God gave her back, gave her to us as parents. And I said, okay, God, now we give them back to you. Thank you for the gift. This child this morning does not really belong to you. The, bo the child belongs to God who gave Jesse life. I did not give my children life. God did. This child belongs to God. I like Psalm 127. Turn over there. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Beautiful Psalm. Verse 3 and 5 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is a man who has his quiver full of them. <laughs> I had a guy tell me the time, well, Pastor, how much is a quiver? How many arrows are in a quiver? I says, I don't know. I said, uh, I know some, I think. <laughs> I, had, I had a member, uh, I've only pastored two churches in my life, one for 20 years in New York and then, and then starting this one. And I had a member of the church I pastored in New York for 20 years, and I, I told, she, they had 13 children. So I said, oh, quiver full is 13. <laughs> so... So whatever it is, it's a quiver full. <laughs> Happy is the man who has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the hands of God. What I like about verse 4, it says, Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children in one's youth. The Hebrew teaching is this. We, we as parents, all we can do is teach our children. Amen? We can teach them right from wrong, what to do, what not to do. And we train them in the things of the Lord. And after the training's done... The Hebrew teaching is they're like an arrow. You put the bow in and you shoot it and wherever it lands, it lands. See, once we train them, then it's their responsibility to do what is right and wrong. Amen? Amen. Children can never come back to their parents and say, oh, it's your fault. No, it's not. No, we've trained you. We've taught you right from wrong. What you do with it, it's up to you what you do with that training. Amen? Amen. Because one day... Every child, every human being is going to answer to God. Right. And every action we've done, every word we've spoken will be accountable to God. Okay? So parents, that's why you train them and give them back to God. That releases you of the responsibility. We are responsible to keep training. And once the training's done, then let them go. That's the hardest part. <laughs> that's the hardest part to let them go. You know? Listen, you as parents have the privilege to love, to train your child, but this child is not yours. The child belongs to God. This child is on a loan from God to, to us as parents. So, what am I saying this morning? Be careful how we treat and care for God's property. God did not, let me say carefully here, God did not authorize the state to raise your children. That's right. God did not authorize daycare centers to raise your children. Nothing wrong with daycare centers, don't misunderstand me, but they're not the ones that train your children. God authorized mom and dad to raise children. Amen? Amen? 
So it's our responsibility. I often say to couples that, that I marry and go through marriage counseling and the idea, oh, I can't wait to have kids. No, you don't realize what you're saying. <coughs> Talk to parents who've had children first and see the ups and downs, the joys, the sadness. Because we, we've all had them. Any parents say, oh, I've had, I, boy, I've, I've been so happy. I'm a, no, no, they're lying to you. Every, every parent has an up and down with their children. It's just human nature. I say talk to the experienced parents first. Let them tell you the stories and how, what, how to raise the children, what has happened. Then you decide if you want children or not. Because once you want children, then you are responsible. And we, and we have to be careful how we handle God's gifts. God, they're God's property, amen? So be careful. So giving your child to God is a confirmation of your love for Jesus. Giving your child to God is a clarification of ownership. Also giving your child to God is a commitment to raise your child, here it is, God's way. Not your way, not my way. It's God's way. That's so very important. To give your child to God, it's not just a ceremony. This is a serious matter when you dedicate your children to the Lord. It's not just a ceremony. It's a commitment. It's a commitment that you're going to, and I list ten things here, and I'll go over them real quickly. When you commit your child to the Lord, according to Ephesians 6, 4, you're saying that you're going to be a godly parent. You're saying, parents, are you right with God this morning? That's the most important question. I'm dedicating my child to God. Therefore, as a parent, am I right with God? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ that's real and personal? I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship personally with Jesus Christ as your Savior. Are you right with God? There are many religious people out there today, but they don't know Jesus. Oh, you know that, Pastor? I was one of them. I was raised a Methodist. Uh, a Methodist movement that was strong, that believed the Bible, that was pretty fundamental. They're not today, but back then when I was a child, well, you know what? I thought I knew God, and I didn't. I was raised in Elizabeth. I was lost. I didn't know Jesus at all until one day after I got out of the military and, and uh, God witnessed to me and I saw my need in Christ and I got on my knees that night on June the 3rd and knelt down and asked Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Boom! Then I became a child of God. And I said to myself, why didn't they teach me that in my church? I was mad. Why didn't they teach me that in my church? Because you know why? Because they were teaching religion. They weren't teaching a relationship. Big difference. Listen, you're dedicating your child this morning. I hope they're thinking about being a godly parent. Secondly, teach this child about Christ. You're saying, you're saying to God this morning, when, as this child grows up, I want to teach them all the things about Christ. Why? Because your child is going to need to be saved one day. Your child is going to have to ask Jesus Christ either to receive him or to reject him. And you've got to teach him the things of the Lord. You've got to teach him about Christ and what Christ has done has died for him. Amen? Amen. That's a responsibility. Thirdly, as a parent, keep this child in church. You're promising God that this child's going to be faithful at church. What, what do I mean by that? Don't, do not send your child to church. Take them to church. I mean, if parents want to send their children to Bethlehem Baptist Fellowship, I'll gladly teach them the Word of God. Man, that's exciting. But I'd rather have them come. I'd rather have them come and take their children. Let them learn of Christ too. Amen? Amen. But that's what you're saying, that you're going to raise uh, Jesse saying, you know what? I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to be faithful in church. 